Hello, I'm Cheryl. Welcome to my sewing room. In my very first video, How to Make a Table Runner, I demonstrated how to make an easy, quick, basic runner with very little sewing skills on your part. Now, let's take that runner, basic runner, and change the ends to give it a different shape. Here are some examples. You'll notice this is a rounded edge. We trimmed off that excess corner and made it very round. There's a really simple technique to this. Very nice runner. Let's move over to this one. This is a pointed runner. I put a little tassel on there. This has three corners. One, two, three. Really easy to do. Not going to be hard at all, so don't get scared. Let's move over to this last one. This is a four corner runner. One, two, three, four. Again, real easy. All three of these edges will take you less than a minute to cut. It's that fast. So let me push these samples aside and let me show you how to do a rounded edge runner. Okay, here I've already put my fabric together. I've got my print fabric that's my top with the fusible webbing on the back and my bottom fabric here. That's this solid one. I put my top fabric face down on the bottom fabric. Then I have made a line of stitches all the way across here. Leave an opening on one side so that you can turn it right side out later. And this is a half inch seam allowance. Now you're going to take this and fold it in half. Okay, put a pin on one, on both corners. All right, do it like that. Now I'm going to take a plate from my husband's kitchen. He's the cook in the house. And this is about an eight or nine inch plate. This is a relatively narrow runner, so you would need a plate about this size. If you're, going, if you're working on a really wide runner, you want a bigger plate or even a big pot lid, like the lid to my husband's wok. He has a really large wok. I borrow that sometimes. I forget to take it back though. Okay, now you're going to turn the plate upside down and you're going to line the plate edge with the raw edges on both sides here. Then you're going to take a fabric marking pin and draw a line around there like I've already done here. See that line? Another thing you would want to do is after you've drawn the line, put one more pin here to hold it so your fabric does not shift. Now I have an injured hand and I've never been able to teach my other hand how to cut with scissors. So I've had to resort to using a rotary cutter for almost all, everything. You can use scissors if you want to. If you're going to use a rotary cutter, here are some rules. Keep your fingers off of this line. Do not have them here. Keep them on the other side and you're just going to begin to cut very slow. Cut this whole corner off very, very slowly. Move that rotary cutter, okay? You're going to continue that process of cutting it off and then it's going to look like this. See this? I have to finish my half inch seam allowance all the way around that uh, far edge here. Do that on both sides. Then I'm going to take some of this seam allowance off on the corner here, like I've done here. I've removed some of the bulk. Very, very important you do that. Then your next step is to use a pair of very small scissors with a sharp point on the end. If they're dull, it's going to be very difficult. So I always keep one pair of scissors set aside for just this step. And you're going to do little clips about a half inch apart. Be careful not to go into your seam, your thread there. You don't want to cut that thread around there. You're going to do that on all four rounded edges. 
If you skip this step of taking the fabric off and then doing the little snipping around the corners, your runner will never lay very flat and you won't like your results. Okay, let's go on to the three corner runner. There again, you're putting your fusible webbing on the back like I've done here. Here's my top fabric and I've got the fusible webbing on. Sew along each side lengthwise. Make sure you leave an opening on one side uh, so that you can turn it right side out. Now you're going to, again, fold it in half. I think you're beginning to see the process here. Fold it in half. Put a pin to secure the fabric so it doesn't slip while you're cutting. Okay? And then you're going to put it into the corner on one of these grid lines here. And the reason why I do that is that if you have a cutting mat with grid lines, it saves you a lot of time of extra measuring. You've just got it all right there. If you don't have a grid line cutting mat, which I advise you to buy one, you will love it. I'm going to go in five inches. One, two, three, four, five. So I'm going to line my ruler up right there. Put that edge there and then the other end I'm going to go over to the folded corner and put it there. Then you can either mark it with your fabric marking pin and then cut with scissors or like I do I'm going to cut it off just like that and throw it away. Now you can see where we're going with this. You're going to do that on both ends. Now I'm going to finish that stitching around that end. Now you have three corners to go around. So make sure you leave your needle down, press your foot up when you turn the fabric so you can go along all these different edges. Then, because we've got three corners, you need to trim some of the excess off either with a rotary cutter or a pair of scissors. Do that on all the corners at each end. Now I've got one more to show you. Here is the four corner. Again, I've got uh, my seam on each side. Leave an opening to turn the fabric inside out or to turn it inside out. Again, fold it in half. Put a pin to hold it together so it doesn't shift while you're cutting. Do that at both ends. Then I'm lining it up in that corner and now I'm going to go only three inches from this corner here. So here we go. One, two, three. And then the other one. One, two, three. And line it up. Take your time. You can either mark it with your fabric marker and cut with scissors or a rotary cutter. If you don't have a rotary cutter, I highly recommend you purchase one. All right, let's show you. We're getting close to finishing it up. There again, now we have four corners here and we want to trim those corners off. And remember, leave your needle down, press your foot up. Trim all four corners to release the bulk. You don't want all that extra fabric in there so that your corners will lay really, really flat. Then I'm going to get one of my samples here to show you. Your final step. Here is that four corner runner I showed you in the beginning. See how nice and smooth it is? Hold on a second, I'm losing my samples. And you're going to pin and press all the way around. It's very important you pin these edges. Then go to your ironing board and start in the middle and press out towards your edge. When you get to the edge, remove a few pins at a time and press it nice and smooth. Do not press over the pins. It'll get glue all over it and everything gets real gunky looking and you don't want that. Then your very last step is to top stitch anywhere from an eighth of an inch to a fourth of an inch. Again, leave your needle down, press your foot up at all 
four corners. Let me just show you a couple of samples of what it looks like when you do something different to it. Here is a rounded edge runner with a ruffle on it. Really cute little chickens, great for a kitchen. Then this last one is a pointed runner with beads on the end. I absolutely love this runner. I fell in love with the beads before I fell in love with the fabric and I had to get it. So here again, great little project for you to do. Well, there you have three easy techniques to change your rectangle shape runner into something with more personality. In my next video, I will show you a very simple technique for sewing a tassel onto a pointed runner. Now to keep informed on all my future videos, click on subscribe, the red button at the bottom of your screen. I'm Cheryl. I'm really glad you came to my sewing room. See you next time. Happy sewing.